This podcast is brought to you by Artspire, presented by the Pump House Regional Arts Center to attract, engage, and connect artists and the community through an art fair and sale on Saturday, June 12th. Information is at artspire.thepumphouse.org. Today, we talk to fiber artist Kathleen Ocker of River Weave by Kathleen. We talk about the process when creating, using sustainable products in her work, what's coming down the road for this artist, and hitting up the upcoming art fairs after COVID. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Kathleen Auger. I usually go by Kathy. And I was born in South Dakota, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I have been thinking about how I got into weaving and I don't think I can really even, I don't know if it would just happened in my head or my mom was a sewer. So we always had fabric around and things like that. And I guess I have some tailors in my ancestry or something, but so I'm just saying it's kind of in the genes, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But when I first wanted to do it, I rented a loom. We lived in Portland, Oregon. Rented a loom from a lady and then a, a lady in our neighborhood was a weaver and she came over and helped me set it up. And, and then I just kept at it over the years. I had young kids, but after they were back in school, I got into it more and, it, uh, and then it grew. And then I met people, especially in the Viroqua area, met people that were also fiber people and that really supported my art, so. How do you go, you know, with weaving, seems to be something that you kind of have to start with a plan. Is that true? Or how do you start a project? Do you go through a process or use what you have left over? (laughs) Yeah, you, you know, you have to figure out what you want to make. And then you go and look at what fibers you have and colors that are possible and then start putting that together in your head. Figure out a a weave pattern because there's lots of different weave patterns that you can use. You have to figure out how many ends per inch because that's really important because that's the size of a weave, ends per inch and how long you want it to be. And then I put my warp on a warping reel And then you just put your warp on the warping reel and turn in as many times as you want ends per inch and um, you have your warp. And then you have to take the warp off the warping reel and thread it into the loom, your reed and thread it into your heddles. And then you have to tie up your treadles and then you can finally weave. And the weaving part is maybe the easy part Setting it up is very involved and a lot of work. So a lot of time, I guess. That's the main gist of it. You know, you reference some keywords there. You use the word sustainable, handmade. Why is that important to you? Also, where where do you get your supplies? Sustainable, I'm so interested in not adding garbage to the world, to the system. So I am concerned about the manufacture of the fibers, responsible manufacturing, um, the companies that sell them. You know, I like, I mean, I try to source them responsibly. So I, yeah, it's mainly like local yarn shops. I know spinners, yarn spinners, harvesters of yarn that spin their own yarn and yeah online sources so mainly that's where i can get my fibers that i need well, speaking of the kind of the supplies and stuff like that are there just regions that you find you spent some time in oregon which i know is a, a large fiber arts community i spent time in new mexico which i also has a lot of the weaving and various uh, fiber arts like that Do you pull from those regions or anything like that? Do you find that there's different communities that you do pull supplies from or they particularly enjoy or? Yeah, when we lived in Oregon, I wasn't as much into the weaving as I am now. So my sources 
Webs is a source that I go to online. It's out east. Vavstuga is also out east. I just like their product and um, Vavstuga especially has a lot of linen product that is from Sweden. And it just seems like that's the original source sort of. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I can't really say that I pull from much from Oregon or out west places. You know, I'm sure life has been different for you during COVID. What's next for you now? So the summer art fairs are opening up, like the Art Spire is in June, June 12th. And uh, and then the Driftless Art Fair, which didn't happen last year. So, um, I mean, for, for anybody, all the art fairs are opening up. And uh, I'm a member of Viva Gallery in Viroqua, so I keep my even keep inventory there and also at uh the river city great river city art gallery in La Crosse. and like you mentioned you're going to be at art spire saturday june 12th from 10 a.m to 5 p.m can people just stop in and see your work there yeah please come come and see definitely i make a lot of wearables so it's really nice if people can come by and touch well, for one thing, touch, touching fiber is really important and try things on, see how they look. Art fairs are really a good way for me to sell my, sell my product. So if people can't stop by at the area festivals, where's the best spot for them to go to online? Great River Art Gallery, but it's new. It's downtown La Crosse on Main Street. And, uh, and then Viva Gallery is also on Main Street in, in uh, Viroqua. And also you can find me online at Facebook, my River River Weave Studio, and at Instagram at river underscore weave at Instagram.com. And they can also head over to riverweavebykathleen.com as well, correct? Yes. Awesome. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com and you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.